But let me come to you, Kofi. How does this strike you? Well, um, first of all, we, as the New Patriotic Party, we accept credible posts uh, research into issues that really will determine how Ghanaians will vote. Yes. So we do not take lightly some of these things. Um, that is number one. On a personal level, um, um, as a scholar, I believe in research, um, but sometimes some of these research uh, are suspects, especially um, one coming from uh, Musa Dankwa. Um, Why do you say that? Because when you look at some polls before this particular one, more so when in one of his polls he um, suggested that um, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia will get 28% in Greater Accra. That, that, that is unlikely and that will never happen. And for me, that is not credible. Uh, based it, on what? Based on, the, based on the records. In fact, when you look at even in 1992, when we had just come out of a military rule going into democracy and President or J.J. Rawlings was even so popular and so powerful, the MPP got 37%. Okay? The MPP has never done below even 40% after 1992. So for you to say 28% in Greater Accra, for me, is suspect. And I don't believe in that. Number two, for you to conduct a poll in Ophori Chrome in Ashanti region and conclude that Dr. Mahmoud Dubaumia in that constituency will get 0%. 0%. Alain Which poll are you referring to? Oh, the, the, there was a poll that he conducted in a uh, Oforikrum constituency. Which do you, one do you, of his polls? He's done many polls. I think monthly. I want to know on, the one, the particular one you're. I'm talking about Oforikrum constituency. It, it was a poll only for Oforikrum yes, constituency. Yes, yes, yes. And, and 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 he he concluded that Alan Chamatin will also get zero percent. That for me is suspect. And I also consider his um, sample size uh, a bit suspect. I mean. Um, compared to what we have with the uh, baseline research or survey by Professor Smatsapon, who does so with about 59,545 50, 59, people. But having said that, having said that, the issues going into this election seem to be, to be similar. When you look at that of the National Civic, um, Commission on Civic Education, their recent um, um, post or uh, research or uh, uh, reports, that concluded that the issues that Ghanaians are looking into are one, unemployment, infrastructure, um, health, and education. When you look at that, that was con uh, conducted by Afrobarometer, you can also conclude that they considered education, employment, health, and infrastructure. Having said this, I believe in these areas, the new patriotic party has done better than the NDC. Again, when you go into polls that have been conducted, and we have to make the point that I mean, Musa Dankwa is not the only person who has been conducting posts, and he's not the final authority when it comes to these posts. We've had Smart, uh, Professor Smart Sapon, who conducted a survey and concluded that Dr. Mahmoud Dubaumia is more popular than, than, than John Germani Mahama. Having said that, you ask me, what do I personally think? I believe that when I share an experience, especially in the United States of America, especially so, in 2016, when I followed the elections keenly, every poll indicated that Hillary Clinton was winning the elections. But eventually, when they voted, we realized that even all the swing states were won by President Trump. Again, in 2024, almost all polls indicated that Kamala was going to win. He didn't win. So yes, we can have these polls. And for us, it gives us a guideline. But sometimes the credibility, especially that of Musa Dankwa. You, you don't think that his polls are credible? No. How do you give MPP 0% you know, for Ukraine? It doesn't happen. In fact, when you look at the... I want to know which particular poll that's, yeah, but that's one. I'll, is I'll give you the exact date. Yeah, that will help, I'll give you that the will help this date. discussion. But, but are you saying that based on all the information that you've received this morning, I know the document just came in, so we've had, we haven't had the opportunity to really get into it, but the insights that have been provided, you don't think that anything that has been read, or at least what I've provided to you this morning, now, is credible? Now, look, I mentioned education, which is a commonality in all the reports, the yes. report that have come in. 
L let me read just that part for you. Mm -hmm. The economy, jobs, and education are the three main concerns mm -hmm. for voters. Mm -hmm. The economy and jobs remain stable at 75% and 69% respectively. And voters' concern for education has now elevated to nearly 52% from 46%. Now, even before this poll came out, just engaging people on the ground through our community manifesto and through interviews and so on that we do on TV3 New Day. These three areas are key among the concerns that Ghanaians raise. Mm -hmm. Everywhere you go, We've been to pretty much most of the regions. And these are the issues that people are complaining about. So you don't actually don't need this poll to know this. No, exactly. Exactly my point. So now you look at the issues and look at the performance of each of these candidates, okay, and each of these governments that we might get in 2025. So you look at education. That is why I started this conversation by, uh, by introducing this education factor. And Ghanaians are not idiots, okay? when they make the point that the NDC will cancel free SHS. I wasn't here to, to give meaning to rhetoric as to cancellation or review. I'm giving meaning to statements that have been made by the candidate in time past. Once upon a time, he said free education is a whimsical promise of a desperate politician. And he doesn't believe in that. Other countries have attempted it and they failed. And for that matter, Ghanaians cannot do it. The fast forward when Free SHS and TVET was introduced in 2018. He said that if a government has a commitment of finance into any sector of the economy, he as a president will not commit two billion at that time. Today we have made well over 9.9 .9 billion Ghana cities into Free SHS alone. He said he will not even invest two billion into Free SHS alone. Again, his own political party told us that Free SHS is a lie, all lie be lie, and it's a scam. So if I sit here and I make the point that they will cancel it, it, it's against the backdrop of the commitment and statement that they have made concerning free SHS. So you are, and that scares me. So it's an assumption you are making. That not, scares me. Not that and, it and has been stated and, emphatically. And, and, but I never said it has been stated emphatically. So it's an assumption you are I, making. I, I made the point that on the ballot paper, there will be an individual, a presidential candidate and a government that has shown commitment to cancelling by their words and their rhetoric their and their actions. That they they, they the organize people to go on the street and say free SHS is 419. The government or the party, political party, NDC did so. Now the other issue is infrastructure. Okay? When you do the comparative analysis, and these things, Ghanaians will look at it. They'll look at a government that has invested so much into infrastructure. As we look at it, as far as roads are concerned, this government has constructed 12,830 roads as compared to Mills, Mahama, Mahama, and Misata, 4,500. They'll look at that. When you talk about health infrastructure, we have done more than any government in the 90, uh, since the Fourth Republic. You are saying these are the, the things that Ghanaians will consider in deciding who to vote exactly. for. Exactly. But then the polls are telling us something slightly different. The economy, jobs, and education are the top three considerations we that should, Ghanaians are that's making going into the point elections. That Musa Dankwe's research should not be the final authority. Do you have another research or poll to And the I gave you that of um, Professor Smart um, 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 Sapo. In, that, in, in the report of Musa Dankwe, mm -hmm. he indicates that Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is not popular. Okay. Not popular? So called. Which poll are you referring to? No, I mean, to? when you look at the numbers, no, he didn't say he's not popular. No, when, I, when we talk about popularity, I mean, who Ghanaians will choose in, in, in the 2024 elections? Mm -hmm. Okay? That's he puts, the, he puts um, mm -hmm. Dr. Baumia at 41.3%. Okay. Yes. Uh -huh. And then Mahama at 52%. So, but when you look at Professor Smart Sapon's baseline survey with about 59,500 people, Mm -hmm. Okay, he put the popularity of an individual who Ghanaians will choose at 38 percent, and that of uh, President Mahama 36 okay. percent. So the, we should establish the fact that Musa Dankwe's research or post is not the final authority when it comes to the elections going forward. Granted, but shouldn't it draw your attention to what people are saying, because these are Ghanaians who were spoken to. Mm -hmm. So, irrespective of how you feel about Global Info Analytics or Musa Dankwa, should you not be concerned about what Ghanaians are saying? Again, I made a point that we, we, we are so critical on the issues that goes into the determination of 20, uh, 2024 elections. Okay. And I made mention of education. I stated Afrobarometer has conducted a survey and has put out the fact that Ghanaians will consider, and I mentioned that to you, 
same for NCC, same for... And I'm saying that when you look at even employment, as was mentioned, about a week or so ago, the flag bearer of the MPP mm -hmm. and the vice president engaged the Ghanaian youth, itemized and put out his vision and his commitment for creating more jobs for the young people of this country. Mm -hmm. And he made mention of the fact that 2.6 million jobs have been created by this government, okay? Then yesterday, we engaged the good people of this country on education, our commitment to our education, the, the, the infrastructure that we've sunk into our, our education, and all these, and our commitment to protect more so the free SHS. So when you look at the issues, we have made critical attempts to address these challenges. Right. Now, I'm, I believe very soon, the vice president or the flag bearer of the new patriotic party will also come out and engage Ghanaians on the economy. So okay. on all these issues that will be going in, Ghanaians will consider going into the 2024 election, we take it seriously and we are making every effort to ensure that before we go into the polls, these issues will be addressed and Ghanaians will once again have the assurance in us that when they give us the mandate and the power, indeed we will be able to restore Ghana to where it used to be and where it's supposed to All be. Right.